Hey folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming Game Link video. As you can see, we are at the big boys table today because we have a big box unboxing for you. We're going to be beating back the dark, channeling the powers of the ancient ones and trying to control as much as we can as we take a look at the big box for Australia, the board game. Hey folks, welcome back. If for those of you who don't know me, and you should by now, my name is Matt and I am super pumped because we have received one of our Kickstarters uh, and there is many more that, that are on their way here. That's no big secret. But today we needed to use the big boy table because it is a big box unboxing for you. This is not just one, this is two expansions in a big budget solution. I am talking about this monstrosity and I use that term as totally a term of endearment the Big Z Box for Australia by Martin Wallace. Now, Australia is one of those games that can polarize people. Not everyone is into the Cthulhu mythos and those people, you know, obviously we don't have time for. I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, Australia is a game for one to five players where you take on uh, the role of uh, different military armies and you've uncovered some, uncovered rather something quite nasty in the outback of Australia and uh, it turns out that the ancient ones have fled and have been awakening in the outback uh, in the deserts of Australia and you need to make your way in and beat them back and as a game it also allows for uh, the old ones to be controlled by the board itself by an AI uh, or an AI system using cards that will tell you which moves, who, who activates and how they move, all that sort of stuff. It is uh, a game that I have played predominantly solo as well. I am talking, uh, obviously with Australia, This is that's this one here. Uh, this is the base game. Uh, and then of course this big box houses two expansions, The Revenge of the Old Ones and Tasmania, with a Z or a Z, um, which is a new expansion, new boards, new everything, new amazing stuff, which I'm really excited about. Um, there is something about this game that I just really dig, building farms, trying to outwit the old ones as they move around the board and blight your farms that you spend ages trying to construct. Also, you know, building your uh, building up your military and sending them into battle against some crazy, crazy monsters and denizens of the underworld and cosmic horror. Plus, it also came with this little doodle that was in this box. Um, it was a Kickstarter exclusive and I couldn't say no. Um, the uh, Shield Mill and Stronghold, the, pr the production on, on Australia was fantastic. It was something that we received. Here he is. Something that we received, um, you know, prior to launching our YouTube channel, and I wish we had a chance to unbox it then. Um, so it's got a little metal uh, Cthulhu token as well. Uh, the tokens, uh, it is mostly chipboards, there's no minis as such, uh, but whenever we do play and Cthulhu is revealed, this guy uh, takes pride of place on the table. I chatted enough. I want to open this big fella. Let's get into it. I am super pumped to see uh, what the expansions bring to the table. Uh, you know what? Let's just pop him there because, you know, he's an old one. He's going to keep watching. Got a trusty pocket knife here. Um, I'm also excited too because I get to do big box content like this now because uh, every Wednesday I am now child free for a few hours and that, my friends, is a very exciting thing to behold. So we've got here uh, the main game, which has the same art. On the side, you've got Revenge of the Old Ones. Uh, on the back there, I believe, is Tasmania. Uh, but look, I'm gonna take the shrink off here, then I'm gonna bring you in close because there is a ton of stuff that we need to get through today. Um, I do have some of the windows open because it is very hot here in Melbourne. We've had a very, very humid summer. Oh, there is nothing cooler than the sound of shrink wrap getting ripped off a box. It's so good, so, so good. Oh my God, it's heavy. So, so heavy. Um, plastic, of course, goes on the floor, as we know. Um, I just dig the art. The fact that there's the two expansions in this. What's great about the big box, funnily enough, it's a big Z box that will hold both of those expansions, but I believe it'll fit all this in that box as well. So that's fantastic. It's a great storage solution. Don't get me wrong, I dig the art on the original books, uh, box, so we'll see how we go. Um, try to fit that all in and whether or not I contain or keep 
the individual box. But look, enough chat, come on over, let's have a look at what's in this bad boy. And there it is in all of its glory. It is so big, it cannot even fit in the frame and I'm digging it, I love it. Uh, there is something missing from here though. The original box uh, has this, there's the original box there, has this little foil, I don't know if you can see it there, um, on the glasses which have that nice little sheen which is just awesome. Um, which is missing for the big box, but that's okay. Uh, the artwork is still very much in line with the original. It looks fantastic. Oh, and while we're here, Let's just appreciate the goodness that is this little Cthulhu Mini as well. Uh, the detail on this little pewter dude is just sick. Um, yeah, and you can understand why we use this as a game piece because it just looks incredible. The detail's awesome. He's gonna sit there right in pride of place because why the hell not? Let's rip this lid off here because I need to know what's inside this box. Oh my goodness, it's date. Let's get this one off here. Um, this box is considerably, considerably deeper, uh, as you saw earlier, uh, than the main game, which is totally fine. Um, <laughs> there is a ton of stuff in here. Oh my goodness gracious me. Um, there is also, it looks like a little bit of a, I mean, this just in itself, the fact that it's all, yes, okay, I didn't get the separate boxes. I don't mind that. I'm digging the fact that it's all going to be containing one and one solution. Um, there's also a thank you on the side of the box here. I don't know if you'll be able, if I'll be able to show you. Um, just thank you for those uh, play testers who helped during the pandemic. Um, there is some amazing artwork. That talks about the storage solution on the sides of the box. Uh, layer one main rule book. Layer two cards and boards. How to pack it all in. Layer three, etc. Layer four. Oh my goodness, digging it, digging it, digging it. Let's have a look. Let's see what we've got. I may need to move this off of the table just so we can actually get in there. I knew I was going to need new space. So we have rule book uh, for Revenge of the Old Ones, which is the expansion here, which allows you to potentially play as the old ones and cause absolute chaos. Uh, new military outposts, extra components, spawning tiles, uh, all sorts of crazy. So as the old one player, you can take action. So you can be the bad guy and I kind of dig that. The art in this game is fantastic as well. I mean, yes, it's got that same sort of Cthulhu mythos because obviously that's what the game's about, but the art and design of this is just fantastic. Martin Wallace obviously uh, has uh, designed things with, um, uh, designed, uh, I don't know, uh, this is one of my favorite Martin Wallace games only because the design is so succinct and the uh, mechanics are very clever. Uh, I really like it, so I'm really excited to see what the expansions bring to the game. Solo mode, because, you know, we always love a good solo mode. I do like uh, the crazy uh, cruel worms, sandworms things as well. Empowered variants too. Then we have uh, Tasmania. Now this is, uh, I guess, is a game for um, one to two players. Uh, sorry, expansion, so you can add a third player. It's designed to be for a smaller player count because it is a smaller map that is tiled, as you can see here. You've got the fixed map, and then on the back, you've got a tiled map where you can actually place and customize your playing board, uh, which is bloody fantastic as well. Uh, solo campaign mode, which we're digging as well. Uh, there's 10 rounds of the game, and you can have different solo objectives and things as well. A campaign mode for this is bloody fantastic. I'm digging that. Uh, I'm digging that at all. And then you've got your different ratings for the campaign, etc how you have your uh, bits and pieces, and the scores go to negative 100. If you get less than negative 100 bad show, your team must have let you down. Wow. Victory and defeat conditions as well. Oh my gosh, okay. Campaign mode is just awesome, I love it. And then you've got these postcards with the crazy art. I love that you've got the same goggles that you saw on the front of the box, but there's an airship burning as this guy's coming out of the ground. One of the deep ones is coming out of the ground. That's fantastic. Uh, then you've got my friend here beating back uh, the the uh, essence that's coming through, through the void. Again, this is uh, one of the Tasmanians fighting the good fight, uh, just as they have been through the pandemic. Your campaign boards and scorecards. So this is effectively a, a mat of scoring cards. Uh, difficulty levels, uh, insane difficulty level. Uh, and then you've got your difference with your points, East, West, Tasmania, because uh, of different maps. And then we've got tokens galore. So the good thing is, and I really appreciate this, uh, whoever decided to do this with the campaign, with the um, components, they've marked here that this is for Revenge of the Old Ones. So I know which component is for which. We've got cards galore here. 
More cards. Oh, the promo pack. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh, there is so much stuff in here. Oh gosh, I didn't know where to begin. All right, let's look at tokens and boards first. Let's see how we go. I may be jumping around between expansions. Bear with me. Uh, there is a lot to get through. So these are um, Revenge of the Old Ones, which allows you to play as the bad guys. So you've got some spawn tokens here, and I'm pretty sure that on the back of those, oh, that's a nice thick bit of chit. On the back of these, uh, you have you know, plus one spawn minions or whichever, whatever that may mean. Uh, you've got victory point tokens. I'm assuming they're VPs because they are the same symbol as they were in the base game. You have a sanity token. Uh, you have what looks like a port or a ship uh, for different players and they are worth different points depending on how you uh, play the game uh, or how much armor and defense they've got. I'm assuming you can shore up your um, port uh, to give it more defense as opposed to just the two defense. Uh, and then on the back, yeah, so you've got different tokens here. So this is plus ones here. Uh, obviously, some of those might be different depending on how you go through those, uh, how or which which way they, they go. You've got an outpost here as well you can build because this is a new uh, base that you can build. It's worth uh, two VPs, it has two armor, uh, and it's the same on both sides. And there's a colored flag uh, for each of the players along with another one of those sanity markers as well. You've got those same little spawn tokens here, but these ones, they'll have, they all have the plus one. Again, more VP tokens. Uh, you've got what looks like another outpost per person, a blank, which is just a blank, that's fine. Another sanity marker, and then you have uh, more spawn tokens, which allow you to add more and more chaos to the board. Let's have a look. We've got here some sheets, one of six, two of six, three of six. Oh my gosh. All the modular board tiles. We've got some filler there as well, which I'll take out for now. And then we get into the crazy stuff. So, okay, so for our memory, just going through all the different components, we've got these uh, sort of a normal spawn versus dangerous spawn tokens, which allow obviously the player to bring out some more crazy stuff. Uh, let's have a look and see what else we've got in the box. I'm just trying to see if I've got some more Revenge of the Old One stuff. That's a board, obviously. Look at that. Look at this storage tray, I'm digging it. You've got a plastic cover for everything. You've got uh, trays for components, more trays for components, a little bag for all your tokens and chits and bits as well. Oh my goodness, places for your hexes, card trays, component trays, dice, uh, all sorts. Oh my gosh, this is crazy insane. No, not dice, tokens, because there is no dice in this game. Wow. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Look at how slick that looks. I'm so impressed. I love it. And I know you can see my reflection in the uh, in the image here, but I don't care. It just looks the business. All right, we've got, so let's have a look. We've got uh, some Mythos cards. Oh, you've got card dividers as well. So these here are effectively card dividers. So you can sort out, you know, which which um, cards you're looking at. So that's uh, what, time cards or event cards. Then you've got some personality cards in the base game. You have personalities that you can use to um, support your work. Uh, you've got some Mythos cards, some Deep Revenge of the Old Ones cards, uh, Mythos cards again. Uh, I think, actually, if I remember correctly, that's Mythos, but they're for solo mode. Uh, and then you've got your uh, uh, more personalities and traits and things like that. And then I think there's a, a player deck as well. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Dividers. Dividers and casings and things. Oh my. Uh, let's have a look. Before we get into the cards, I think we can move on to Tasmania now. We just can't, we just have to do the cards separately unless these are the decks of set up cards and reminders. There's a bird outside that is making a whole lot of noise. <laughs> There's a, a tree on our property that's just got a couple, a, a, a couple of birds that decided to nest in it, which is fabulous. But it's very, very frustrating when we're trying to do stuff. So plastic, of course, goes on the floor. My gosh, I'm digging this. So we have set up reminders, uh, summary cards. Now I think those are for um, uh, Revenge of the Old Ones because the rule setup is slightly different for that game if you have uh, a player who's gonna basically cause trouble. Uh, and then I think you've got just the Mythos cards for yes. Okay, so these are the solo Mythos cards here for solo mode. And then these ones here are the Mythos cards for you know multi, uh, multiple players. So the Revenge of the Old Ones doesn't include a lot of stuff. It's basically cards 
uh, tokens and things like that. And obviously the ability to play as an individual uh, player. So you've got uh, obviously different monsters, the time it costs to play that card because at the base game of Australia, you have a time track that runs around the board and your turn comes up when you are the furthest from the end of that track. Uh, which means that when the purple disc is the furthest away, the old ones activate and cause trouble, and that is no different, obviously, in this mode. So you will spend time to play cards, and there are some zero monsters in play. Uh, Azatoth, blight any two farms that are adjacent to an old one. Oh my goodness! It pays to be the bad guy. Inflict one damage in combat and force one loss of sanity. Move one of your face-up old ones to two spaces in any direction. Chthonian, move up to two control rail links belonging to any one player. Oh, you can mess with their rail line. Stop them from getting deeper into the board. I love it. And the cards are individually numbered as well. Dark, young, deep ones we saw on the box. Dolls, dimensional shambler. Oh my gosh. Flying polyp, destroy one airship in combat and take VP for it. Formless spawn. I just want to be the bad guys. Oh my gosh, great race of Yith. Move the old one disc two spaces backwards on the time track, which means you might get an extra turn. Hema 4, Hasta, if Cthulhu is in play, either move him two spaces or he heals four damage. Oh my God, the king in yellow, holy crap balls. Hounds of Tindalos, Hunting Horror. Oh my gosh, Nug and Yib, Naliatep. Serpent People, Servitor of the Outer Gods, Shantak, where is he? Shabnigarath, Star Spawn of Cthulhu, draw six movement cards and resolve them for one time. Holy crap. Don't get that in play. So the old ones, when you're playing the original game, they move based on uh, a movement deck. So you flip a card and then it'll tell you which old ones will move, how many spaces via different compass points on the map, etc. Uh, Star Vampire, inflict one damage in combat. Sathogua, take the formless spawn from the deck or the discard pile into your hand and shuffle the deck, man. Yog Sothoth, return one eliminated old one tile, not temple to the board face up. All placement rules apply. Oh, I love this game because you can seed the board and set it up and it's different every time you play. This Mythos cards just add so much to the game. Oh my goodness. And then you've got the solo versions as well. So you've got, I think, similar cards, but they'll have different symbology because it is a solo again, a solo mode. So uh, I think they're similar cards, similar effects. Obviously, deep ones take two damage when your port is attacked. Remove two of your connected rail links like we saw on the, on the card before. So there's similar effects, but obviously they're designed to use in solo mode when you don't have someone playing... Um, Yes, it's the same same thing. Uh, playing as uh, the old ones themselves. Oh my goodness! Oh, I love this, and the art is obviously the same, um, which is fantastic. So I think I don't know. I, I'm digging it. I love it. It's it's just fantastic. The um, the art on the cards is brilliant. Um, the mythos cards themselves. I just there is so much going on here. I'm geeking out about it, and I love it. All right, let's have a look at the little promo pack. Now these have uh, 10 helper cards, three new mythos cards, and three new solo mythos cards as well. And more plastic to go on the floor. So we'll put this to the side here, and this is notes on the different cards themselves, on the Night Gaunt Cthulhu helpers, how they work, uh, etc. So the rule cards there, you can always pause the video if you want. We are shooting in high def as we do. Uh, Bork Rug, blight two farms next to water, either a sea or a lake. Night Gaunt, steal a personality card for the next five time points. Place a cube on the track as a reminder. And there he is, Cthulhu. Place one XX temple on a level two spawn tile, add its three spawning X old ones, and then move them. Wow, all about the damage, Bork Rug, and this is a solo version of those folks. And then you've got Florence Porson, a poison. So this is uh, your helper cards, and uh, you re relocate up to three of your farms. The productive ones earn you gold. Uh, Elsa, where relocate up to three of your rails. So these are personalities that you can hire as helpers. Lord Switchner, exchange one of your team with one from the display. Iron Horse Bob, spend no time to build three rail. Wow, that's powerful. 
Buddy Badowski, temporarily use another player's personality card. Charles Gray, retrieve all of your cubes without spending time. Whoa, that's huge. Very huge indeed. Captain Rex Porter, export up to six coal iron. Emily Earhart, your airship has two times range and two times damage capacity during this combat. Wow, she's gonna cause trouble. Dr. Armour Fibes, no further sanity loss during the current combat. And then you've got Dr. Herbert Coombs, your infantry can take four damage during the current combat. Four damage? Oh my gosh, make them super soldiers. Digging that. Okay, so we've got some extra, obviously, uh, promo packs, uh, cards there. So we'll put all those together because it'll make putting everything together nice and easy. Helpers can go here. I'm just dealing out cards and making space as I go. All right, let's move this one here for now, just so we can have a look at the Tasmania stuff. First and foremost, let's have a look at this big ass board. Now the board for the base game is considerably huge. So it's quite likely I'm gonna to have to get out and give you a wider shot. Uh, it is a slightly smaller board. Um, and I can you can see, I was talking about the time track before. So that runs all the way along. The old ones start on that 22 space. And obviously once everyone passes them, um, it's, it's on for young and old. The glowing pieces here are where events and things happen. And uh, you can see the compass rows there that will tell you the direction that where the old ones will move. Uh, tokens for all the craziness that's in play. And then you seed the board. So at the start of the game, you'll actually have, so you've got your lakes and things here, Tazzy, Hobart's in here somewhere. So there's your infantry and what they cost to recruit them. Uh, there's obviously one gold on the board here. There is a temple or something here that you then um, seed out uh, the different aspects here. Uh, and then obviously you go from there. So actually one might be a level one enemy, a level two enemy, level three enemy. So when you place a level three enemy here and then you flip it over, you then spawn whatever's required um, for, for on that card. Uh, and there are obviously a few uh, secrets here on those tiles as well. You never know what is actually gonna happen on the board as it happens. Now this is a set board that's fixed. You can't change this one, which is fine. Um, but then when you, uh, if you wanted to really make it crazy, really make it your own. So with this fixed board, you're still gonna get a variable setup, which is great. But on the reverse of, of Tasmania, uh, you've got a blank board. Uh, oh, what does this mean? There's a crazy little symbol. On the front, it was just like a little talisman. But here, it's all glowing and active. I'm gonna find out what that's about. I don't think it's anything. I think it's literally just there, just because it looks good. Uh, but you get hexes, uh, as we saw uh, earlier. So hexes like these here, and you pop them out, and you place them on the board, and they make up, obviously, the different map um setup variable setup so obviously as you place them there's different things that get placed on those tiles for example here you'd have three gold a level one enemy and some corn for a farm um, on the back they are just uh, black tiles so i would assume you just shuffle them up place them all face down flip them over and then set the board as you go uh, then you get uh, the more burnt uh, part of the country here you've got tasmanian what looks like a tazzy tiger or a tazzy devil uh, level two enemies coming into play uh, then you get level three enemies, farms, sheep, and obviously the more farms you have, they will generate gold as you play through the game as well, which we can use to obviously recruit bigger, stronger, and meaner uh, infantry and resources to fight uh, the old ones as they move around the map and try to stomp on all of your stuff, uh, because the old ones are dicks like that. Then you've got these nice green pastures where you can raise some cattle, have a nice long happy life until the old ones come and smash your stuff, which they will do because that is their job, as I said before. And then you've got uh, on these tiles, you also got some lakes and things as well you can bring into play too. Uh, and again, there's always little extra details on these tiles. They're not just generic tiles. They've also got the art, some of the art from the old ones in there as well, which is just Awesome, I love it, I love it, I love it. I will get a wide shot of the board for you. If you haven't seen it already, it'll pop up on the screen now. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about it, this this game, the concept of the game, the fact that it's not something, once you understand the mechanics of it, it runs really quickly. I just, I dig it, I love it. But that's pretty much everything in this big box um, scenario craziness. I'm gonna try to pack it as best I can to get it back in this this crazy box here actually while we've got nothing in the box let's have a look i'll show you more about um the thank you on the side there
because it's very cool. A nice, nice little acknowledgement uh, to those that have helped out uh, to bring this game to light. And I do like the fact that you've got main rule book goes on the top, layer two, A, B, and C, personalities, revelations, old ones, challenges, promos, mythos, mythos, solo, reminders, the Tasmania board, Australia board, all the player mats, the revenge rule books, campaign score pad, player aid sheet, and the black bag. Then layer three are all your tiles and tokens, and layer four, VP tokens, gold, iron, coal, etc., all in the bottom tray. Metal mini can be purchased separately. The miniature Cluthu goes in here, which is this guy, our little friend. He's got his own spot. I love that. <laughs> I love that they still think that I have the box that it came in, which is going to sit on top there, but that's okay. I'll find a spot for him, I'm sure. He will dominate the landscape because that is what he does. Uh, I do have the bag for him, so maybe that'll work too. Um, Look, let's come out, talk about first impressions. There is a lot to unpack here, as you've just seen me do, um, but I'm very excited to uh, get this back to the table and take on those solo modes and uh, talk a bit more and uh, introduce more people to the wonderful game that is Australia. Well, there it is, the unboxing of the Australia Big Z box and including the Revenge of the Old Ones and the Tasmania expansion as well. I am... Oh, it just revitalized my interest and piqued my excitement about this game by bringing those two expansions to the table. To the table. That campaign mode, boom, I love that. Um, it's gonna be hard, I think, to get together enough players to do the campaign uh, justice, but at the same time, there is a solo mode, so who knows, maybe I'll be able to give that a crack and play it double-handed with two different players. I don't know, I'll work that out, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, Australia is a game that I don't think gets the love that it truly deserves. Obviously the backers that are out there that have jumped on board the expansion and of course the base game will know just how good this game actually is. Uh, if you haven't had the pleasure, haven't had the experience, I do urge you to check it out. It is actually a really great game and definitely worth a look. It's one of those games that Again, we'll probably polarize people, but there is so much going on. It looks fantastic when it's set up. Great table presence, even if it is just tokens and no minis. I don't mind that. It's fantastic moving everything around. The fact that you've got the ability to now play as the old ones in this box, bloody brilliant. The fact that all of this fits in there, fantastic. That's gonna be, I mean, it's, it just looks amazing. In fact, by the time you would have seen this, I probably would have moved everything across into that box so you see what it'll look like. Um, the board, the components, the cards, everything fits in the one box. St storage solution in spades, and I'm digging that. Um, I I cannot wait to get it back to the table. It's been a little while, so it's, it's, it's revitalized my interest in what has been a great game. Martin Wallace uh, and Amanda Milne at Shill Mill, you have done an amazing job, Stronghold, for all your work putting this together. Mwah! Trebian, Chef's Kiss, you've knocked it out of the park. Very excited to get it to the table. On that, if you've played Australia and you have or, and you haven't got the expansions, what would you most be interested in seeing? Would you like to see Tasmania? Would you like to see the old ones running havoc across the map? Uh, let us know in the comments below if you've played Australia, what your favorite parts of the game are. Um, by all means, if you have questions about the big box expansion or the base game, please let me know in the comments below and I will get back to them when I get a chance. Uh, that is pretty much all there is to it for these uh, two wonderful boxes you see here in front of me and for our little mate here who is just happy to get back to the table and cause some trouble. Um, very excited to uh, see what we have in store uh, with this one when, when I get it back out. Uh, we have lots more content coming for you folks. Another couple of big box unboxings, including Nemesis Lockdown Wave 2. Boom! We're so excited for that. Uh, Ascension Tactics is coming out soon as well. So uh, check back soon. If you are one of our Patreon subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you allowing us to do all the crazy stuff we'll do. You will see all of those unboxings first because you are our lovely supporters and part of our gamer army. Um, other than that, folks, look after each other, get back to the table, play more games, keep loving each other, and we'll see you back here very soon for more crazy and fun antics on HP Gaming Game Link. Until then, though, it is bye for now.